What's good YouTube family? Thank y'all for tuning back into another video. If y'all don't know, my birthday is on the 10th, my mom's birthday is on the 11th, so if y'all want to wish us a happy birthday in the comment section, especially my mom, I truly appreciate that. I'm a mama's boy, that's my rock, I love my mom so much, and I just want to be able to show her the love that she can get from the late phase community, so that would be a major blessing if y'all could do that. But the reason I'm making this intro is because I got a new setup, I got a boom arm and a new microphone, so... When I had ordered the boom arm, I actually ordered two because there was two that I kept hearing reviews about and I just want to see which one I like better. So what I'm going to do with the extras is since it's going to be my birthday, I'm going to auction them off. Since it's my 26th birthday, I'm going to auction these off for $26. So y'all are literally going to be able to get a setup worth $270 for $26. The microphone I've been using up to this point is a blue microphone and it was $170. And then the boom arm that I had ordered that I'm going to be auctioning off is also a blue boom arm. And it was $100. So like I said, for $26, you'll be able to have $270 worth of product. And the way that y'all can do this is y'all can either cash at me or Venmo me. And I'm going to put my cash app and my Venmo in the comment section. And when you do cash at me, when you do Venmo me, make sure that you leave a comment. Also, if you're not following me on Instagram, it's the same username, Lake Fades. Make sure that y'all follow me on Instagram. Y'all can send me a DM of the proof that... You cash at me or Venmo me so that I can get y'all in there. And I'm going to give y'all until... Hmm. I'm going to give y'all until the end of this month, November 30th, to enter this raffle. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. I'm not putting a limit on how many people are getting into the raffle because I feel like it's truly a great opportunity. Um, and you're going to win a lot more than you put in. And if you don't win, just know that you made a contribution to me for my birthday. Just look at it like that. And I truly appreciate all the love and support. And I hope that somebody who really needs this setup and who's going to use it, I hope y'all win, man. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show y'all. This is the boom arm. It's literally brand new. I put my microphone on at one time. And then I put this microphone on at once. Just to make sure that this microphone could go on this. So this microphone can go on it. I used it like this this whole time. But I never had a boom arm. So, like I said... It's a blue microphone, and I can show y'all which one it is, and then a blue compass boom arm. Like I said, I hope that somebody that really needs this wins, and thank y'all for tuning into this video. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and God bless y'all. What's good, YouTube family? Thank y'all for tuning back into another video. Make sure that y'all watch this whole video. Also, like, comment, and subscribe. This puts me more in YouTube's algorithm and helps me to continue to grow and to reach more people by using the gifts and abilities God has given me to glorify Him and His name, to spread the gospel, and to make Him and His name known. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin his hair up. Next, I'm going to go in with a one and a half with the grain. And I did it with the grain first just to see how it was cutting. This was only the second time I had cut his hair. And now I'm just going to take the one and a half and go up against the grain because I'm just realized like, I remember how thick his hair was. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go one and a half with the grain all the way to the top. So make sure that when you're doing this, you're combing through. And now all the hairs are even in the same length. And then also you're going to see me flip the clipper over to get these little hairs. There you see. So you just want to make sure that everything is really clean, nice and even. And then you're just going to do this all the way around the head. Now we're doing like a mid to high fade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the guideline just a little bit above, like in the middle of a C cup really. And then I'm gonna drop it a little bit in the back to give myself a little more room to fade into. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ball the area out. Make sure that when you put your guidelines in, the guideline is like the foundation of the haircut. It's going to play a big factor in determining how even and clean and neat of a haircut that you can give. So make sure that when you put your guidelines in, you set them in nice, clean, neat, and even. I always say this because it's important. And like I said, y'all can see how I drop it in the back a little bit. That's just because I'm giving myself a little more room to fade because usually like the back is more dense and has... 
you know, the hair is like thicker in the back. So you just want to give yourself more room to spread the fade out. Next, I'm taking my Babyliss Custom FX um, shaver and I'm just going up. I'm not going up all the way to the bald line. I'm going up under that. Just making sure that I get everything under that nice and smooth though. This is going to give a longer, longer lasting haircut to the client. That means flick out. This is a laser blade flat. So to establish my first guideline, I have my blade open on my Babyliss Low Pros. I'm going up like half an inch. And to establish the guideline, I'm going to flick out. After I have the guideline established by flicking out, I'm going to lay my blade flat and go to the top of the guideline, ensuring that all the hairs are the same length. Next, I'm going to close my lever halfway and go halfway up the guideline we just established. My next step is close the lever one more notch and tap the bottom line. And then after you do that, you close the lever all the way and tap the bottom line, taking it out completely. Y'all can see how the fade already is coming together. This is with no detail work so far. And now I'm just going to show you how I connect. I like to work in sections from the front of the head to behind the ear and then behind the ear to the back of the head. This always helps me to keep my fades even and just, you know, it can be a lot, especially when you're starting out cutting. It can be a lot to, uh, to, to take in some time when you're doing a fade all the way around. And if you can't take the guideline in with the, with your clipper, make sure that you take the guideline out with whatever you set the guideline in with. This is a key. This is a, a gem. That's a, you know, a very important thing. If you can't take it out with the clipper, make sure you take it out with what you put it in with. You can see how I'm using a corner of it. I'm not laying it flat. I'm using the corner of it. Now I have my number one guard on and I had the blade open and I'm going right off where we left off with that one and a half. Next, I'm going to close the lever halfway and I'm just going to continue every time. I'm just going to continue to go a little bit lower on the fade. Next, I'm going to close it all the way and I'm going to tap the bottom line. And I know it's not going to take the line out completely, but it's going to soften it up very well for me to be able to come in with my zero guard and take the line out completely and pull the fade all the way together. So every time that I close my lever, I move down on the fade. So I started with the blade or the number one open right up under where we left off with the one and a half closed. And then I'm gonna close the lever halfway and I'm gonna slowly drop the fade. And I'm gonna close the lever all the way and tap the bottom line and soften it up. And like I said right here, I'm just showing you all this so you can see how I always connect my fade and how I, how I keep a clean and even fade all the way around the head. Now I have my zero guard on and with the zero guard, I like to look at it as an eraser guard or a detail guard. And, and I like to do a lot of detail work, work with it. And by detail work, I mean lever play. So I open and close my blade or my lever when need be and corner work using the last couple of teeth of my blade or the corner of my blade to pinpoint the dark spots and bring them to the light. And y'all can see how this, I just got into it and it's already pulling this fade together. That's why the zero guard and it is very important. Like I said, here you go. I'm just showing you how I, once again, continue to keep it even fade all the way around the head. You already know what I like to get onto on this side. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the message. I was on live last night and I let somebody, you know, give me a verse to, uh, to give a message on today. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna read this verse for y'all. I forgot his YouTube username, but Whatever your name is, bro, shout out to you. I appreciate you. He said he wanted the message to be about perseverance, and he gave me the verse Hebrews 4.12. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to read Hebrews 4.12 for y'all. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Man that it's a lot going on in this verse it's a lot it's a lot of information you can take from this verse first you got first the first part of it first for the word of god is living and powerful that's true the word of god is living and powerful it's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the division of soul and spirit so 
that means like when you hear the word of God, if you ain't doing right and, and you hear something, it's gonna pierce you. It's gonna it's gonna be piercing to you. It, it's gonna make you want to change and become more godly. And of joining Samara and is it a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart? So no matter what, God's always gonna know where your heart is. The word God is always gonna know where your heart is. So you can't hide anything from God. And then it's crazy that he said he wanted it to be about perseverance because I woke up today and this was the verse of the day on my Bible app. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. It's crazy, bro. That's how God works. Like I went on live. I asked them, do y'all have any um, subjects y'all want me to give a message on tomorrow? He had gave me Hebrews 4.12 and then he said he wanted it to be about perseverance. And I said, like, I think my message from last week was about perseverance, really. But so he gave me that verse, Hebrews 4.12. And then I was like, okay, bro, I can do that for you. I woke up today. And then my verse today, other day was Galatians 6.9. Just goes to show you how God works. So whatever you're going through, man, don't give up. Continue to put God first. Seek God, his kingdom, and his righteousness first. And everything else will be added to you. And no, just like I said last week in Romans, Romans 8.18 and Romans 8.28, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in you. Um, and God is working all things together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. So y'all can see how I went ahead and I prepped the hairline by first I combed through it and then I cut it down with the blade or with the number one guard closed. And now I'm showing you where his hairline is actually at. He has a lot of overgrow in his corners, but we need to match it up with this front part right there. Just to, uh, you know, give him a nice clean hairline. And he doesn't have a lot of hair between, like, you know, a cut down section between his braids. So make sure that you don't cut into the braids either. Right here, I'm just go ahead and I'm gonna clean this area. And blow dry it. Make sure that when you blow dry it, you actually make sure it's dry and uh, use cold air. Go ahead and throw some holding spray in there. Make sure I pull all the hairs forward and everything's laying how it's supposed to lay, stretched out fully. And y'all, when I get into these steps, like I'm making an online academy, so it's gonna be way more in depth if y'all are interested in that. I would highly recommend that y'all subscribe when I get that made because it's going to be in depth and just way more information than what I could put in a YouTube video. So with my lineups, I like to start in the middle and I like to work my way to the side. Once the front meets the side, then I tap in the vertical bar. So right here, y'all can see I'm keeping it natural, especially where he has that, um, like I said, where that braid is. There's not a lot of hair there, so you can't push people back because you're going to cut into his braid and you don't want to do that. So I'm just making sure I have it nice, nice and straight. Like I said, once the front meets the side, I'm going to tap the vertical bar in. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to tap the vertical bar in, making sure that I get that 90 degree angle. Y'all can see that I'm going to clean. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And uh, you, you'll you see when when the camera focuses in how clean that looks. Watch, super clean. Make sure that you're very careful you don't push the corner in though. Cause it's, a, it's an easy thing to do, honestly. I'm not gonna lie, it's an easy thing to do. You just gotta get your repetition in and you'll be all right. Get a super crispy lineup. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the C cup in. And honestly, I this was the second time I cut his hair. The third time I cut his hair, I took his vertical, I took the C cup out. Um, but yeah, we give him a C cup. So I put it in from the bottom of the vertical bar, and then I go to the bottom of that, and then I connect them at the top. And I, this is one of them cuts that I used enhancements on, and I wish I wouldn't have. Man, like, make sure that when you guys, when you do C cups though that once you do one side you look at the other side and you match them up i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna tap as much as in 
I'm gonna hit the top of it. Then I'm just line up right above his lip. Do the same thing on the other side. Y'all can see how clean this haircut's looking. Like I said, I wish I would have. This is one of those ones that I wish I would have kept it natural. And for some reason, y'all, usually I'm real light on enhancements. Like when I do enhancements, I like to make it like a natural look. Um, obviously, I wanted to be look enhanced, but I try to keep it like a natural enhanced look. On this one, I feel like I just made this enhanced was way too dark. I'm not making no excuses, but the, we did go to the shop and cut his hair like 10 a night just so I could get a video. And then I just for me to, I've had a, I've had this video for probably close to a year, honestly. So right here, I'm using Kiss Express, and uh, yeah. Sean cuts hair color hands for card. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw some fibers in. Maybe I should have combed through the fibers more than I did. Like I usually comb through the fibers a lot, but make sure that when you're lining the hands, when you do use enhancements, make sure that you line them up um, in the lineup that you already have established. Don't push the lineup back just to line enhancements up. Like keep it at the line that you already have created. And y'all see what I'm saying? This is way too dark, man. I wish I would have left this one natural. But it still turned out clean, though. I'm not... I mean, obviously, he washed the hands without his back to what I liked about the video anyway. So y'all can see it on the fade butter. The lineup is extra crispy. Just... I wish I would have kept this one natural. Still smooth, though. Like I said, it's still smooth. Right here, I'm just doing detail work. So like I said before... By detail work, I mean lever play, open and close my blade or my lever when need be, and then corner work using the last couple of teeth of my blade or the corner of my blade to pinpoint dark spots and bring them to the light, making the fade as smooth as possible. And uh, yeah, let me know what y'all think about this cut in this comment section. If y'all was able to sit through this 15 and a half minute video, I truly appreciate y'all. If y'all came to my channel to just because you like watching barber videos, I hope this video satisfied you. If you came to learn something, I hope you take something from my game, apply it to yours, advance in your career and your craft and your life. And if you came for the message, I hope that it touched your heart, your soul, your mind, and your body. Let me know what y'all think about this cut in the comment section. Um, I'm also gonna be doing a giveaway. Don't forget about the giveaway. Uh, I'm gonna probably take a video real quick and post it before this video. So do a little intro real quick. And then, uh, like I said, I got an online academy coming soon. Man, I would. I would love to see y'all in there and I'm gonna be going live with y'all on there too. It's gonna be it's gonna be a very unique academy um with some great information in there. So like I said, man, let me know what y'all think about this cut in the comment section. I think it turned out fire, fade, butter, lineup extra crispy. Thank y'all for tuning in to another video. I hope to see you back on the next one. May God bless.